Yeah, yeah. Welcome, bike. My name is Nicholas, and we've been doing a ton of rookie content, but I wanted to reserve Fridays for dynasty content in general. Some of y'all have never played in a dynasty league before. We are working behind the scenes to set up some sort of system or automation where we can get y'all together and play against each other. Sexual Patterson's on the ones and twos for that. Um, so stay tuned. If you've never played in a dynasty league, we will make sure that we set up that funnel and we do all the hard work and the manual work so you can get into dynasty leagues with other BDGE members. Drop comments down below if you would join one of those leagues. Today is going to be a full startup draft, all right? So we've been doing some rookie drafts with like two rounds, but I wanted to get a little bit more in depth. So today we're going to jump onto the sleeper platform and do somewhere from 15 to 16 rounds of a dynasty startup draft. This will be half PPR. This will be super flex, uh, three wide receivers, two running backs, one tight end. So pretty standard settings for a dynasty league. And uh, I will be drafting against the computer, the sleepers, ADP, whatever, whatever. And basically just pausing on my draft picks and talking about anything that happened beforehand. And then more diving into the picks that I make as we go through the draft. Uh, we have the NFL draft combine this weekend and prize picks puts combine props up on their app and their site, which is insane to me because they start off with things like this. Zach Charbonnet at 444. 40 time. Who on fucking planet Earth thinks Zach Charbonnet at 224 pounds is going to run a 443 40 yard dash? I will eat a raw egg on camera on the next live stream I do, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Friday of next week after the combine, if Zach Charbonnet goes under a 444. Okay, so if you have any strong inclinations, a lot of the times this is very similar to season long props, where at the beginning of last year, like August, I mean, July, whatever, when it, as soon as the season long props dropped on prize picks, if you took the less, if you took the under on almost all the season long props, you hit on like 95% of them. Same thing with the 40 times, okay? And I'm sorry by the time you actually watch this video, I feel like his 40 time is probably north of four or five. And a lot of these guys, 40 times are probably a whole tenth of a second higher than when they started. But if you go now, go as quickly as you can, you'll probably still be able to get some really, 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 really good times. If you just hit the under on or the over on all these times, as soon as they drop it, they do it every single year. And it's always the biggest money making play for us. All right. So go use the prize picks app prizepicks.com download the app link in the description use promo code bdge if you're a first time depositor on there and they're going to hit you with a 100 deposit match so if you throw 20 dollars down on the app they're going to give you 40 to play with and we're going to turn that 40 into a million fucking dollars because it's zach chabonet's fat ass all right it's enough talking for me we're going to jump on the sleeper platform we're going to do a startup draft if you have any questions comments concerns or whatever whatever make sure you drop them in the comment section you'll know what we got to do Shirt's tucked. Stop yelling. Okay, I'm going to just throw myself in the fifth spot because I don't have a reason why. I don't know. Just feels like a neutral spot that you guys can't really yell at me for. So let her little, 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 let's let her rip. Girl, Holmes, no surprise. Jefferson at two. Burrow at three. Hurts at four. All right. Uh, I mean, listen, we're in a super flex draft, so this for me feels easy, or at least easy between some choices. Like there's there's a tier of quarterbacks. If I'm in a super flex draft and I'm in the top half of the of the first round, I'm gonna grab my franchise QB, the cornerstone quarterback for my super flex team, and let that dude ride for the foreseeable future. Now, I don't think Jalen Hurts going as a QB three is uh is going to be that hot of a take come this dynasty season, come this startup season. I think you'll see him go anywhere from like two to six, seven. The dude had like 15 rushing touchdowns this year. He is uh he is like a Derrick Henry mixed with a quarterback, but also so is Josh Allen. So you have Josh Allen, I think it would be ignorant to take Herbert, Lamar Jackson, Justin Fields. I mean, if you're going to get crazy, I think he needs to be like the QB six or seven. If you're going in a startup draft, I would probably take Trevor Lawrence over him. Lawrence looks like he's going to be like the Joe Burrow of next year pretty much so honestly I wouldn't be mad between Trevor Lawrence and Josh Allen but I think like Josh Allen I feel like is a clear pick here for me as a dude who's just gonna you know put up 30 a game and help my team get to the playoffs without a doubt All right we're going Josh Allen there for sure see a heavy dosage of wide receivers just a couple running back okay cool yeah sleeper has rookies in here so you see Bijan Robinson go at the 2-2 I don't think that's outlandish whatsoever I actually think you'll probably I mean if I'm sitting there at 111 I'm taking Bijan over over CD Lamb for sure now we have an interesting spot here where it's like that kind of feels like the last QB in this 
tier here where he's like going to be a solid fantasy player. I, I don't think I'm going to grab a second quarterback right now for my super flex spot. I'll figure that out later because we already have Josh Allen to anchor that position. Walker's interesting. Uh, had a great rookie season, obviously. The rest of these backs don't really intrigue me down here at 2 8. Eckler, Barkley are just a little bit too old for me, a little bit too early for ETN, and none of the other guys are worthy of the 2 8, in my opinion. Now, the wide receivers are sexy. Ooh, ooh. Okay. This is, this is definitely where we're headed in this direction. Tight ends. If this is a tight end premium, maybe you look Kelsey's way or, or mm, dare I say Kyle. Dare I say Kyle Pitts now. Uh, we're definitely looking at wide receiver. I think you'll see that that will definitely be the theme of this offseason, whether it's dynasty startup or redraft. I think you're going to see wide receivers go crazy in terms of uh, their draft capital. But I actually think like these four running backs going off the board early. If any of these four drop to me here at the 2-8, I would probably sink my teeth in. C-Mac, Bijan, Taylor, Brees Hall. How do you rank these dudes in Dynasty Startup? I think you'll see a lot of Bijan as the RB1 immediately, which is crazy, but he's going to get the draft cap. And he already looks like a legendary running back. Weird to say, but as a college running back, if you go look at his headshot, if you go look at like any shots of his face, he already looks like a legendary running back. It's weird. Uh, C-Mac's going to be a nightmare in San Francisco. Brees Hall, I, I, I might, mm, I think I might go Bijan, Brees Hall, C-Mac, JTD. But right now I'm deciding between I'm on Raw, and I could pair Diggs with Allen. That's kind of sexy. I think a lot of my strategy when it comes to Dynasty Startups kind of depends on my first pick, or at least my first two picks. You kind of decide like what direction you want to go in with your team. Like if you go C Mac and AJ Brown, you're going for win now. You know, you're going for win now immediately. But if you go younger, you know, you might not be going for win now. So you kind of dictate that way. I'm looking between Amon Ra and Garrett Wilson. I, I mean, both of them are young, absolute stud players. Uh, they're both, you know, the cornerstones of their teams. Garrett Wilson feels a little bit more intriguing to me here. And I think this is probably where he will go off. Like, I feel like he has uh, kind of tough. Who do you go? Amon Ra or Garrett Wilson? I think I'm going to go Amon Ra for right now. I think he's a top five dynasty wide receiver. I think Wilson falls right outside of that. I'll go here. Get back to me, baby. Get, get fucking back to me. Yeah. Get in your home. Way to come back to daddy. Yeah, we're just we're just gonna fade the running back position for right now. We're, we'll figure that out later. Uh, but there is just like there is no chance I go anywhere else here besides Garrett Wilson. Had Dak fallen back to me here, maybe I think about it. Same thing with Barkley. Same thing with Diggs. But I am. I'm ecstatic about this start. Both you just have three dudes who are going to be in your lineup for a very long time, and I don't feel confident saying that with a lot of like a lot of the starts here. Like how much longer th this team right here, Team Twelve? I know it's a computer doing it for you, but they went like win now, right now, right? Like this team will likely be in the championship this year as a dynasty team. AJ Brown, C Mac, Jacobs, Devonte Adams, QBs. Okay, Devonte Williams coming back from a very serious injury. Uh, who else is young and explosive here? Ramondre is interesting, but you got to remember Ramondre came in the league old. Ramondre is not that much younger than a lot of like these veteran backs. Although it was just his first breakout year, I think I think the I think when you're doing a dynasty startup, especially if you have three wide receivers starting and then you can have an extra two flexes, I feel like the move is pounding these young wide receivers who uh, will just solidify solidify your roster for a very long time. You can always build running backs through the rookie drafts. You can always find RB twos just kind of like hanging out there. Tight ends. I mean, th these are actually kind of intriguing tight ends too, but I probably don't go that way unless I'm in a tight end premium. Do we want to grab our second quarterback? Lance is interesting, but at this point in the offseason, I feel like he's a little bit too he's a little bit too risky here. Same thing with Levis, obviously. Anthony Richardson is actually really intriguing here. If he drops to me in the fifth round, I might take him. But when you have guys like Drake London, who you know are going to be stud, Devonta, Devonta Smith, uh, if you feel really good about JSN, like he's your wide receiver one in this class, this might be where you look at him. Yeah, I'm going to take Drake London here. So we have two second-year wide receivers. We have one third-year wide receiver, all of them kind of entering their prime. Then we start to see these veteran running backs go off the board. There goes Devonta Smith. There goes Trey Lance. It might be it might be crazy to go Richardson here, but here, here like I, I, I'm pretty sure Richardson's going to end up going top 10. I'm pretty sure he's going to be the starting quarterback for a team within the first eight weeks of the season. And then he's going to be a fantasy monster. This dude's going to run like a 4 4 7 40-yard dash. This dude's got a cannon of a fucking arm. Like he's going to be a problem for fantasy lineups that are playing against him. Do I go with another wide receiver here? Do I go with the tight end? I kind of like George Kittle. He's getting a little bit older. I like Goddard too now that he's going to be stacked with Hurts for a while. Hmm. Hmm. I think I go with another wide receiver, another young wide receiver, be it JSN, Christian Watson. This was just such a good class that we got last year. We've had such good classes for like four years in a row that it's like, and the rookies, the rookies will creep their way up the ADPs here. I don't, I don't think these are necessarily accurate, but I guess what I could do is why is JSN like fucking 40 picks higher than 
Where's Jordan Addison? All the way down here. Yeah, I guess this isn't necessarily like it's early in the offseason, so it's hard to be wildly accurate with it. But if this was like the real situation where I'm looking at, okay, do I want a young wide receiver like one of these guys? Or, you know, you look at your opportunity cost. It's like, hey, should I solidify my tight end spot with George Kittle or Dallas Goddard? And then next round, maybe miss out on this chunk of like five wide receivers, but still have Burks. DJ Moore, Terry, Quentin Johnson, like depending on who your wide receiver one in this class is, it's going to be a toss up between JSN, Quentin Johnson, Jordan Addison, and it'll especially shake up after the draft when we know draft capital and landing spots, Kayshawn Booty, like all guys that I really like. So it's, it, you almost ask yourself the question, is it worth skipping on this tier? I almost feel like no. I almost feel like, hmm. Hmm. JSN feels like he's calling my name here to anchor, like just give me another Amon Ross St. Brown after a year. Running backs, no one that I love. Kincaid, my fucking boy. All right. If I pass up on these tight ends, they're not going to be there with me. If I pass up on A. Rich, he could get back to me. If I miss on A. Rich, like I could probably still get Mac Jones. I could probably still grab like Aaron G Aaron Rodgers and Hendon Hooker and kind of see where that goes. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to roll the dice here. Grab, K how old is Kittle? How old is fucking Kittle? 29, got her to what? 28. Yeah, I, I think I'll grab Kittle here. Oh, no. All the wide receivers are ripping off the board. Sheesh. Let AR-15 fall bike. Come bike to daddy. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I could have got Kittle second round. The next round. Could have waited on that. Yeah, listen. Uh, Kirk, I feel like, is not a bad pick here either if you want to, like, solidify your roster and have a nice, safe floor. And I don't think, like, listen, in a super flex startup draft, like, Anthony Richardson is not going to go down at the 6'8 after the draft, after he goes, you know, number 7, 9, 12, 16 overall, something like that. So I'll, I'll make it as realistic as I can and grab him here because he's not going to fall to the next round. But... If you did, I'll rip a rich. Ooh, fuck. I was really hoping one of those young wide receivers kind of came back to me there. There goes Terry, Ayuk, Quentin Johnson, and Jordan Addison. So we can start looking at the running backs. Kamara's old is going to get suspended. Cam Akers had a great second half of the year, but who knows what the Rams team is going to be this year. Who knows if they go with another running back. Aaron Jones is going to be back with Green Bay, but... Uh. Charbonnet, we don't know about draft capital yet. I honestly think I might just fade this position more and more, like roll roll the dice on Tyler Algier, some rookie running backs, uh, you know, with David Montgomery, does he end up somewhere in a good landing spot? I think you can fill the running back gaps with enough, you know, eight to 10 point a week type players later and just keep filling up with really talented young guys here. Uh, Kirk fell back to me. I think in a real startup draft, I might solidify my other spot here with Kirk because I have Anthony Richardson here, and I don't know how early he's going to get on the field. I don't know if he's actually going to be good, right? It's give and take. The upside is there, but so is the downside. So a dude like Kirk, who probably be in Minnesota for at least a few more years. Contract, I believe, is up this year, but uh, they'll probably re-sign him because, like, what else are you going to do? You just going to start over with Justin Jefferson? No. I think I keep hammering young wide receivers. Kirk had a big year, obviously, but with Calvin Ridley joining Jacksonville, and Calvin Ridley is, what, 28? He's kind of old already. I think there's a chance that Jacksonville addresses wide receiver depth in the draft. I've seen a lot of mocks where they go with a wide receiver 24th overall. I don't think that's actually realistic or going to happen, but... I could see them doing it second, third round. It looks like they're going to resign Ingram. So I almost feel like it might be a weird take, but I think I might like Jahan Dotson or Kayshawn Booty more than Kirk, but I could probably wait on them if I do that. They're all the way down here, even though I don't think anyone would take these guys over those dudes. I kind of really like Jahan Dotson, honestly, weirdly. He was so good at Penn State. Kirk's, what, 26, Dotson's 22. Or you have my tight end in Kittle. Feel good about that. Do I grab up my first running back? No, there's no one in like a tier of their own that I really want to dive into. I think in a listen, in a real draft that this is my predicament, I'd probably go Kirk here. If I'm be if I'm gonna keep it a bajillion with you. Fuck it. Let's just do it. Here goes all the running backs. No. Rel no! No! I command you to stop. Okay. Okay. We still got some young wide receivers. All right. Uh yeah, it got it got grim. It got grim big quick. I think I rip off some some young some young ripe wideouts here. James Cook is kind of interesting if you go zero RB. Plus I have Josh Allen, so uh, I might I might look at James Cook. There was just a report that came out today, I think, from Brian Bean, the GM, saying they're excited to get him more touches, get him a little bit more volume next year. Now I don't think Buffalo's landing spot is, is a sexy one. I really don't. Uh, I think it's probably it's overly romanticized. It's like New York City in the winter. Everything about it is filled with snow and. Uh, and you're not getting touched enough. I mean, you're not getting enough touches. James Cook is what I'm referring to. Hmm. Kind of like Cook, but I, I feel I, I feel safer. I still feel safer about these younger wide receivers, like being better assets for my dynasty team right now. I might. I, I think I'm starting to get overly high on on 
booty. I want him on my team bad. I want him on all my dynasty teams really bad. Yeah, I'm going to roll with him. So now we have four really young wide receivers. There you go. We started the run of this never works out. This never works out for me. You guys are fucking jerks. AJ Dillon, Brian Robinson. I was, today's video was actually going to be about three running backs I really want to buy in dynasty and uh, Antonio Gibson or three running backs at the, at the at the lowest career value that I want to buy. And Antonio Gibson was one of them. Brian Robinson was fine last year, but when you really look at the numbers, he was actually kind of terrible. Gibson was also like really, really terrible, but Robinson was was right there with him. He just happened to get a few games where he had like 20 carries. Uh, This is this might be where ooh, Evans down at one. This feels like the time that you get out of Evans. This feels like a time where I would buy a younger wide receiver again. Like Zay Flowers, depending on where he lands. Jalen Hyatt's probably going to end up being like a top 15 pick and go way higher than this in drafts. I really like Cedric Tillman. So I'd probably go with one of those dudes, but I think it's about time we grab a running back. I'll go with Tyler Argyle here. Fuck it. Fuck it. Let's roll Atlanta. I got two Atlanteans. Thank God. Let's go. I think Super Bowl goes through Atlanta if we're going to be really honest. If I'm going to be, this is one of those more like transparent, uh, vulnerable videos. If I'm going to be really honest with you guys as an audience members, I think Super Bowl goes through Atlanta this year after we get Lamar Jackson. Darius Tony, love him. Tyler Lockett. I f okay. You know what? If I'm competing this year, if, if a rich hits, I think my team competes this year. And I've, why is Lockett being so disrespected? I was doing some best ball drafts this week, you know, best ball drafts, and, and you got to pay to get into them. So all the ADPs and all the actual draft spots are real. Like, people are really competing out here. And Tyler Lockett continues to go in, like, the sixth, the middle of the sixth round. And those are redraft leagues. It makes no sense to me. I feel like he just proved, like, the one question mark we had about Lockett was, like, can he produce with Geno Smith there at quarterback? And he very, very vehemently pro uh, did so. Is Geno Smith, like, not going to come back to Seattle? I feel like he has to. How can they let him slip? So I feel like Lockett down here 10th. Now, this is where it's like, okay, you have your team set up as like a young rebuilding team. Do you go with a Lockett or do you go with a Jalen Hyatt? Do you go with a guy that you hope turns into Tyler Lockett? That's the question. Or do you go with one of these young running backs? I might I might start throwing like darts at some of these younger running backs. Like Hula Herbert, I feel like is the perfect startup draft running back where you just got to get some points because David Montgomery is a free agent. We'll probably test free agency. Sean Tucker, I'm not a huge fan of him, but I don't hate him. Tank Bigsby, also not a huge fan, but don't hate him. Kendra Miller, absolutely love. I wish we we're going to uh, be able to see him at the fucking combine, but we're not. I always wonder where these stars come from. Like, who? when was I targeting these guys in drafts? It must have been last year. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Uh, Yeah, if I'm going to fuck it, I'm going to go with Tyler Lockett. Like, I would take Tyler Lockett over Juju Smith-Schuster one billion times out of a billion. Fuck, there goes all the young running backs that I kind of wanted. We wanted Khalil Herbert, though. I'm just going to I'm just gonna take him and not think about it. That's what I mean. If, if the rest of your starting lineup is so good, the two running backs that you have here, like Algier and Herbert, will give me 8 to 10 a game, and I think the rest of my lineup will take care of itself. Especially, like, if Josh Allen put me up his 30 a game, if A. Rich hits, he's putting up, you know, 23 a game. We're ready to roll. Who else are, like, like zero RBs? Like, Jamal Williams, zero RB. Damian Harris, depending on where he lands, could be a zero RB candidate. Kenny McIntosh, I love. Here's what's going to happen with Kenny McIntosh. I'm going to call it right now. I'm going to look like an absolute stud. Kenny McIntosh. Amazing pass catching running back out of Georgia. Also 6'1", like 210 pounds. So big. His offense coordinator, Todd Munkin, who's been the OC at Georgia for the last couple of years, just got signed with Baltimore. I think that he's going to push to have Kenny McIntosh drafted by Baltimore. And I think McIntosh is going to be a, a problem for J.K. Dobbins. That is where my mind is right now. Are there any younger wide receivers that I still really like here? Wandell coming back from the ACL. Michael Thomas, absolutely not. Sky Moore, I'm like still kind of interested in. I still feel like he has a chance to be a player in that offense. Might be famous last words, but it's like how many times can we make the same mistake? I don't know. I'm ready to do it again, though. Running back. What is? What do they do with Jamal Williams? Do they, are they going to re-sign him? I think at this point in the draft, I'm probably going for, okay, if like Mac Jones or Aaron Rodgers are still sitting here, I probably grab one of them and then try to trade them. Or even like a younger dude like Purdy, Ritter, Jordan Love for sure. One of those guys I would probably draft and then see what the trade market looks like after the startup draft. Uh, like these guys are going to have uh, about a million more value points, whatever that means, than like some shit backup running back. That's just the truth of the matter. There's no one that sexy. Jacoby Myers is probably about to command. This is an ugly pick. I don't really want to do this, but if we're going to be, guys, again, honest transparency, radical honesty, whatever the fuck people say, uh, Jacoby Myers is about to grab like a $15 million plus per year contract and be like the wide receiver two in an offense for the next three to four years. I actually feel like this is not that bad of a pick, so I'm going to go with Myers there. Oh, I hated that pick. That's disgusting. Why did I do that? Ugh. Ugh. All right. No one I like that just went off the board outside of these quarterbacks who I, again, I echo, I would take one of them, but whatever. Tight end. Uh, I just fucking love Dalton Kincaid. I made a whole ass video of him on, on Tuesday. I'm just, again, grabbing him and not thinking twice about it. He's my tight end one in this class. Led the country in receiving. 
at the tight end position. Played one year of high school football, walked on to San Diego, dominated, got that scholarship at Utah, dominated, led the country, dominated. It's going to be a first round pick, which he was fucking running at the combine. No one's running at the goddamn combine. What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing How about combining your fucking brain cells together and putting that work? In? Um, I think like at this point, I'm just taking shots on running backs that could hit. No to Clyde. Harris might be the guy for me. Um, I hope he lands in a good spot. I hope he comes to fucking Atlanta. I guess he'd be kind of redundant with Tyler Algier as an Atlanta fan. Like he's Damian Harris is a good ass football player. Like he's a, he's a player that I want on my team. But I might look at Harris. They, a lot of a lot of uh, Deonta Foreman talk up this offseason about them wanting to resign him and him be like the lead back here. I'm going to go with McIntosh, though. He's my favorite rookie running back on the board, I believe. You can see that. I fucking Jeff Wilson started. I knew what I was doing last year. Kenny McIntosh is my favorite rookie back here. Oh, Kenny Mac. Kenny Mac father. Is he Banaconda? off the board yep i would just be scooping up all these quarterbacks Dwayne mcbride's really interesting really 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 good two down runner he's a big boy 511 215 uh, i'm not sure what he's actually gonna weigh in at but he's also not running at the damn combine he's honestly fucking embarrassing what are y'all doing really good runner uh plays is borderline zero pretty much a negative on third downs though so it's like okay what are we doing there Kenny Gainwell is actually, Kenny Gainwell might be the dude I'm going for here. It, Philly probably addresses their running back position in free agency or through the draft because Miles Sanders is gone, but I'm going to go with Gainwell here if he's actually sitting there in the 15th, which he probably won't be if we're going to be honest here. Again, today's video, all about honesty. Um, that's who I would grab for sure. Kenny Gainwell actually finished the season, I mean, obviously really strong. Everyone knows that. Played a very big, very big part in the uh, playoff run for the Eagles, and I think he will continue to get more and more involved. I don't know if Boston, Boston Scott can't still be on contract. He's been on a lifetime fucking contract with Philly. He's like the James White of Philadelphia. For the record, would go with the quarterback again here. Any young wide receivers we like? Like Tyler Boyd, what's he doing over here? He's still here in Cincy. Hunter Wren. What if Aaron Rodgers ends up in Las Vegas? Still doesn't make me want Renfro. Do we like Tyquan Thornton? I still kind of like Tyquan Thornton. I like Parker Washington a lot. He's one of my favorite rookie wide receivers. Remember Isaiah McKenzie? RIP. I think Calvin Austin could low-key be uh, a winner this offseason. Eric Gray. How many running backs we got? So we have, what? Let's see my roster. So we have Josh Allen, Tyler Algier, Khalil Herbert, Amon Ra, Garrett Wilson, Drake, London, George Kittle, Booty, Tyler Lockett, A. Rich, Kirk Cousins, Kobe Myers, Dalton Kincaid, Kenny McIntosh, Kenneth Gainwell. All right, on paper, on paper, uh, I mean, it's not like ready to win a championship right now, but I feel like a few things break right, and I really like that startup. We obviously just need a little bit more help at running back, so I think that's probably my weak point, so I probably continue to rack up some some younger backs here. No one really that intriguing. It's kind of ugly. Ronald Jones, for the fuck of it. It's our last pick, right? All right, we'll take Eric Gray. Why not? Super elusive back. Bounced around in college a bit. Actually, he might have just played at Oklahoma. I like him a lot, but he might be slow, and he might end up getting drafted super late, but what the fuck are we going to do? It's, what is it, February still? It is, last day of February. Happy March. Actually, you guys will be watching this in March. All right, well, that is, that's the final team. Let me show the final draft board. There you have it, all 16 rounds. Wow, that fits perfectly on the screen. Oh, my team is right here. Oh, it's beautiful. It highlights it. What do y'all think? For my first startup draft of the offseason, that middle, like, section, those first four picks are just, are just fucking heat. It's just beautiful. Kind of like this team a little bit. Team 8. Team 10 is nice, too. Dalvin Cook at 6-3 is kind of ugly, though. Waddle, Higgins, Alave, Jameson Williams. Mmm, they took my strategy. One QB, one young quarterback. They kind of just went the exact same route I did. I respect it. And they stole fucking Jahan Dotson from me. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder if they're listening. Is Sleeper using AI? Are they using bots? I don't know. I don't know. What I do know, Prize Picks is acting a fool with the combine numbers. So before people start running tomorrow, I believe you're watching this either Thursday or Friday. Combine starts on Saturday. Quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends are on Saturday. Running backs are on Sunday. Get your slips in on Prize Picks and use the promo code BDGE when you sign up for the first time. When you deposit for the first time, they're going to double whatever you put down with the promo code. I'm out of here. I love you. Hit this button, subscribe, all that shit. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.